Happy Boxing Day and welcome everyone to the program. In the spirit of Christmas, President Muhammad Buhari is using the occasion to reiterate his administration's commitment to fixing the country's infrastructure. The president was speaking when the Federal Capital Territory Minister Muhammad Bailu led residents of the Federal Capital to pay him a Christmas homage. The delegation is made up of politicians, traditional rulers and religious leaders. Our correspondent Ibrahim Adra, our report. Punctuated by bouts of laughter. <laughs> Most of them, reactions to President Buhari's jokes. The guests, led by the minister of the FCT, are residents of the nation's capital, paying the traditional Christmas homage. We are here today to pay you a Christmas homage. President Buhari welcomes his guests, expressing appreciation to Nigerians. I thank Nigerians very much from the bottom of my heart, very sincerely. Because you are our eyes and ears. So we have to listen to you. And I hope you are encouraging our constituencies that uh, this leadership is concerned with them. He reaffirmed his commitment to his oath of office, promising judicious use of resources. This leadership sincerely believed that if you get the infrastructure right, most Nigerians will mind their own businesses. They may not even care who is in government. And we hope that history will be kind to us. We will do our best to make sure resources continue to be utilize responsibly. And then, more humor. Uh, I'm being called Baba Goes Low. <laughs> Very unfair. When I came in uniform, I was in a hurry. You know what I did. But you know how I ended up. I too was locked up. <laughs> <laughs> there were cards for the president. and opportunities for a handshake with guests. <laughs> a former senator and Buhari's minister believe the administration has done well. We're excited to work with him. We've seen the patience, we've seen his fatherly disposition, and we've seen the love for the country. He takes decisions not based on pecuniary interests, but based on the, the need to cleanse the system. The homage is the only known official engagement of the president today. From the presidential villa, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. Former National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki is still relishing his air of freedom after spending four years in custody and is waxing philosophical about his ordeal in the last four years. In an interview with the Voice of America Hausa Service, the former NSA expresses his gratitude to Nigerians for the prayers while in captivity and insists he has no personal feud with President Muhammad Buhari. The interview was conducted in Hausa. In wani irin godiya zaka yi mal'umman Najeriya da suka tattaya ka addu'a har Allah ya kawo ka wannan rana da gashi yau ka samu yancin kanka haka to godiya wato ba ka da magana da za ta yi za ta nuna iya ka godiyar da suke al'umma wanda suke ka addu'a amma mun gode Allah ne kawai zai saka musu da alheri ba abin da za ka ce wato Allah ya saka da alheri kuma Allah ya biya da niyya gode kwarai mun ga fa'ida abin da aka yi ga shi don an yi tunda an fara kuma an kare lafiya to ganin cewar ka kwashe tsawon lokaci kusan shekaru hudu a yanzu zaka ce kana da lafiya ko ko akwai wani abu da ke damun ka Alhamdulillah ba abin da ke damu ba cikin ko Allah ba abin da ke damu ba to yanzu ka samu iyalin ka cikin koshin lafiya kuma kowa cikin lafiya alhamdulillah to ranka shi dai yanzu menene kiran ka ga ita gwamnatin tarayya ita kuma gwamnati ai ba kiran da za a yi mata ina ka dai ka san komai da ake abin da ya faru da mutum duka a rayuwa abin da Allah ya tsara shi ne ake ba wani abu face wani abin da Allah ya tsara rashin sani ko rashin tawakkali shike sa mutum yana wahalar da kansa ta dauka wane yayi ma kaza ko shi wane ya dauka yana da ikon yi ma kaza ba haka yake ba duk abin da Allah ya tsara haka zai an yi kamar da kace na dauki lokaci shekara hudu na gama yau sun kare na fito Allah ka dai san abin da ke ta gode ba wanda yake da iko wannan ba wanda ya san 
to kawai kowanne a zuma za a tafi adalci kowa yana zuwa wanda yake zuwa wasan lafi juma'a kullun indai musu jini yana zuwa abin da ake zuwa ma kullu liman ya kudu da yana muku magana ku yi adalci ku yi ke gaskiya ku yi adalci ku yi ke gaskiya to wannan akwai dalilin da ake wannan a taurare shi a taurare shi to yanzu zaka koma domin ka ainihin gabatar da hujjojin ka ga kotu cewar wannan abuwa da ake tuhuma ka ba gaskiya bane to da ma ai ina zuwa kotu abin da ya hana zuwa wannan akan an ce a take ni da a take ni wani ce to duk lokacin da gwamnati ta je ni za mu ci gaba da shari'a to ni za ma a shirye ni akwai rade rade da ke nuna cewar zaman kasancewar lokacin da aka yi juyin mulki na shi shugaban kasa Buhari shi yasa kai ka kama shi kuma yanzu shi yasa ake mai da martani kai ma akan ka eh to da yi wannan ni bari da sanin wannan ni abin da na sani abin da Allah ne ya kaddara shine ya faru ba wani abu to babu wani takun saka tsakanin ka da shugaban kasa Muhammadu Buhari kenan ni dai ba na takun saka da kowa ba duk na fi karin haka na inda ina takun saka Meanwhile, the presidency has denied that the release of the former NSA and that of the convener of the Revolution Out protest, Mr. Omoyele Shore, was as a result of international pressure. On our Politics Today program, the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Garbasheu, explains that the release of the two detainees was due to the president's commitment to the rule of law. Individuals are at liberty to express their own opinions. If it is the sense of Sarah or whoever, is that all the prisons should be emptied and everyone be sent home. Uh, so let them them hold their own opinion. But the law of the country will be un upheld. And uh, please, the media should have a duty uh, to encourage those on bail to obey the terms on the basis on which they are given the bail. And the fact that one is given a bail does not necessarily mean a quitter. The government is not compromising anything, but that the government wants to set an important example of obedience of the law, even when you disagree with what the court says you should do. In this particular case, the government has its own rights as to how and why the bail was given and an intention to appeal. However, the government, the government is saying, okay, let us do this to show respect for the courts of the land, so that all of this thing about the lack of respect of due process would just uh, give give us a chance and, and, uh, and, and uh, leave the table for now. In the meantime, detained journalist Agba Jalingo currently facing trial over a report alleging former governor of Cross River State diverted 500 million naira from the state's treasury is still in detention. Now, this is in spite outcry from civil society groups and a leaked video indicating the sitting judge's alleged bias against Mr. Jalingo. Now, we're being joined by the country director of Amnesty International, Mrs. Osayo Jigo via phone from Abuja to comment on the issue. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us this Boxing Day. Good afternoon. Right. Uh, first, I'd like you to respond to the video, the alleged video uh, showing uh, alleged bias. Have you seen that video and how do you respond to it? Uh, thank you for having me on the program. Uh, um, and in cases like this, um, you notice that from statements or inactions or actions of the state authorities, they're able to infer that they are setting uh, bias that is occurring. Um, so the video you made reference to, of course, it's not comments that you expect a judge to be having. A judge is supposed to be independent and to listen to all the of both parties. But clearly, that there's the interest in Galingo's case by the state government and that um, in this particular case, the judge also is seeing the pressure to throw the government line. And that was why there was a big campaign to have the case transferred to another judge who would be able to handle the case without any fear or favor. Right. Now, I remember that earlier in November, Amnesty International declared Agba Jalingo a prisoner of conscience. And now I'm sure Nigerians will want to know, have you been interfacing with the Cross River State Government, perhaps the judiciary also on this issue? And what has the response been? Well, we've consistently called for Jalingo as well as for Ryan Bakari, because we know that the trials that are currently ongoing were only instituted as a result of actions they took to promote the rule of law 
freedom of expression and to ensure that everybody is able to understand what is going on in the government and in the country as a whole. So we've written to the authorities calling for their release. We've given them the reasons why we think they should be released and why this current trial, especially that Domingo is going through, is something that is used as a tool by um, a government that does not want dissent. Dalingo raised issues about corruption. What we would have expected is for the state government to put things in place to investigate those allegations. Accusing him of treason when all he did was to do a story really shows the overreaching of the state government in terms of how it responds to uh, perceived attacks on their uh, capacities within the, in the government. Right. On a final note, uh, Amnesty International has also said, and this is a quote from a statement she put out, that the flawed charges and sham trials of Shore, Jalingo and Bakari expose the inadequacies and bizarre manipulation of the Nigerian criminal justice system and an unacceptable con con content for the rule of law and human rights. Now, that sounds to me like an indictment on not just the executive at the state level, but also on the judiciary, and in this case, the police. So the question is, what are those flaws you noticed, and uh, how do we fix them? Well, using the, the government is using laws in order to oppress and intimidate people when they speak out against injustices and engage discrimination in the country. So, for example, if you look at the charges that were leveled against Shore, against Dalingo, you would see that these charges carry very serious punishment, reasonable felonies, accusing them of violating the Cyber Crimes Act. The whole idea is to demonize them so that people would already think that they've done something so grievous, no one would want to touch them. But when you go beyond the charges that have been presented, then you're able to see that the only thing, the only reason why these guys are under attack by the authorities is for speaking up. And that is an attack on human rights, on freedom of expression. And if you look at the way the system is, we already knew that our system, our criminal justice system is already struggling. There's a lot of strain on it. There are delays, there's bureaucracy, there's corruption. And now the um, executive predominantly is using state resources, using state agents, using the system in order to push their own agenda. And it causes raise for concern because today is Shore, today is Jalingo. Who knows who to be tomorrow? Well, if they're able to respect the rule of law and allow justice to take its course, then everyone will be heard fairly. The judiciary at this time has been cowed. Cowed in the sense that it's not been able in certain cases to take a stand on what... Um, fair hearing entails, and to ensure that everyone is given equal access to justice. But at the same time, what the judiciary has also acted, they are giving orders. The government has persistently chosen which orders to obey and which ones not to obey, depending on who is affected. Right. Meanwhile, we're talking about everyone is equal before the law. Right. So it's really a call for the judiciary to take their, to protect their independence. All right. And to, uh, to say enough is enough. We are here to stand on the part of justice and to ensure everyone has equal opportunities to present their case. Absolutely. Uh, Mrs. Osayo Jigo, would like to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program this Boxing Day afternoon. We've been speaking with Mrs. Osayo Jigo. She's the country director of Amnesty International Nigeria. She's been speaking on the case of Mr. Agba Jalingo.